Joining me now live from our Sydney studios is the Manager of Opposition Business, Paul Fletcher. Mr Fletcher, really appreciate your time here on Sky News. Thanks for coming in. I want to get your, revela your thoughts on this um, revelation that was revealed on Sunday Agenda this morning. So the Minister, Tony Burke, he's announced that the government's going to intervene in this McDonald's workplace dispute. Do you think there's any risks for the com Commonwealth in doing this at all? Well... Uh we do know that this government uh, has an interventionist bias, but look, I will leave detailed comments on these matters to our uh, spokesman, Michaelia Cash, on uh, workplace relations matters. You're right to say that this week in Parliament will be a very busy week. Of course, Labor's had a train wreck week in relation to superannuation. We saw the Treasurer floating all kinds of, uh, flying all kinds of kites in relation to superannuation. Uh, they've now said they're going to increase the tax on superannuation when they promised there wouldn't be new taxes on superannuation. So certainly that's one of the issues that we will be uh, pursuing in the coming week uh, in question time. Um, question time is an, is an opportunity to hold the government to account and that's something that uh, uh, we take very seriously. We know that Australians are doing it tough. We've had nine increases in uh, interest rates, nine successive interest increases in interest rates. We need to see a plan from this government to deal with rising interest rates, to deal with inflation, uh, and instead what we're seeing is a series of broken promises. So we will be asking questions about all yeah. of these issues in the, in the coming week. So if the laws are brought forward on the superannuation changes, potentially this coming week or in the next couple of weeks, well, coalition MPs that all be granted a conscience vote on it, given that we did see some of the MPs from the Liberal Party were supportive of some form of policy change in the superannuation space before it was announced on Wednesday. Well, uh, the sequence of how these things work is that uh, legislation needs to be prepared. It's very clear this government's making it up on the run, so almost certainly they haven't even started work on preparing the legislation. Uh, what we do know from what they've said is that this is a measure that will be uh, included in the budget. But it's clear there's a whole range of details that just have not been thought through. What will be the implications for younger Australians? Because uh, the Treasurer has said that this is not going to be indexed. So that three million cap not being indexed means that uh, in real terms that will uh, hit more and more people over time. But the fundamental point is that this is a broken promise. Uh, it's a broken promise. Uh, uh, Mr Chalmers, Mr Albanese both very clearly said before the election that they would not uh, be changing uh, the rules in relation to superannuation. Of course, they also told us before the election, in fact, on 97 occasions, that Australians could expect their energy bills, their power bills, to be going down by $275. In fact, uh, they've only been going up and they've been going up by very substantial numbers. Uh, Mr Albanese called the parliament back together in December. Supposedly he had a plan to fix it. That's had no impact to date, so we'll be asking questions about that. Um, the fact is mm. uh, that last week uh, we saw yet another broken promise from a government that is racking them up at a pretty remarkable rate. Now, Andrew Bragg on Sunday Agenda, he urged his Liberal colleagues, even the ones who don't support The Voice, to support legislation that would bring on the referendum. Do you think that's fair enough? And, and why won't Peter Dutton just allow a conscience vote on that issue? Well, look, we've been very clear in relation to The Voice. We're approaching it in a spirit of goodwill, but we've said that we want to see the details, and that's very important. Now, the Prime Minister keeps referring to the Karma Langton report, which was that very detailed piece of work that was conducted over the term of the previous parliament uh, under the supervision of then um, Minister for Indigenous Australians, Ken Wyatt. Now, <clears throat> amongst the things that proposed was regional and local voices. We don't yet know from the Prime Minister, from the Labor Party, whether regional and local voices will in fact be part of the model. So what we're doing as a responsible opposition is calling for uh, the details to be provided so that we can make a judgment on those details. We're not going to make a judgment in advance of knowing uh, what the precise model is. When you make a change to the Constitution, that's a very significant matter. Mm. What we also know is that the history of changes being passed at but referendums, it's a high bar, a majority in a majority of states. The history is that uh, Australians need to be persuaded and quite a number of times in our history 
uh, referendum proposals have not been passed. So the government needs to be doing. But I guess a we're job. only just talking about. Mr. Um, Mr Fletcher, I guess we're only talking about legislation to allow the vote. If you forget the detail, surely can you trust the Australian people to make such a decision just to bring on the vote? Well, there's a couple of pieces of legislation. One of them uh, deals with some uh, issues in terms of mechanics. Then, as you rightly say, there'll be the piece of legislation which effectively authorises... Uh, the referendum being taken to the Australian people. But the government itself is saying there is more work to be done before uh, that bill is ready to be introduced into the parliament. So our, our principle as an opposition is very clear. We wait and see what the legislation looks like. Once the government, has, with all of its bureaucratic mm. resources, has finished preparing the draft, it then gets introduced. That is the point at which we sure. have then the full text of the bill, unless the government chooses to share it with us earlier. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, and that's when we do yeah. our detailed analysis and arrive at our final position. We're just about out of time. I just want to get your thoughts very quickly, Mr Fletcher, on Aston. Um, John Howard's been uh, speaking to me for Sky News about the importance of the 01 by-election for him. Do you think Peter Dutton will be able to hang on to this seat, given that even Anthony Albanese was in the seat yesterday uh, thinking Labor's got a good chance? It's an important by-election. We're not taking it for granted. We've got an outstanding candidate, Machina Campbell. Uh, clearly, uh, Peter Dutton himself has been there on a number of occasions, as have uh, many other colleagues. Um, we're campaigning hard, but we don't take this by-election for granted at all. It will be a challenge. Uh, every by-election is a challenge. Uh, and we'll be uh, highlighting the importance uh, of holding the government to account on matters like delivering on its promise of $275 reductions in power bills, what's its plan to deal with rising mortgage interest rates. These are issues we believe that the uh, electors of Aston will be uh, having, uh, paying attention to and we'll be certainly seeking to highlight those issues.